Three, two, one. This is Radio Days Africa 2021. Audio amplified. Download the Radio Days Africa app. Search Radio Days Africa in your app store. Hello and welcome to Pod Meet, which is part of the Radio Days Africa conference today. My name is Elmer Schutz. And if you've never been at a Pod Meet before, it is a room full of people who love podcasting, want to start podcasting, have been podcasting for so long that they have been to every Pod Meet I've ever hosted, which is now officially five years. Um, I can't believe I, um, I've loved podcasting for that long and much longer and that you guys have let me chat to you for so long. Um, what PubMeet is, is a networking project. And if you ever want to reach us to ask for any advice, et cetera, you can email podmeet at journalism.coza. That's just the best way to reach us. We do a few meetings a year. We used to hold them in Joburg and Cape Town. Now we just hold them online until we can meet again in person. And really what it is uh, today, as always, it's just a chat with somebody in the industry talking about how they got into it, what they learned, all those kind of cool things uh, so that you can learn from them. It's always a really good chill time. And um, as always, we will open up later to questions. If you are joining us on Zoom, you can pop those questions into the Q&A box. Please don't put them in to the chat. Put chats into the chat. So if you have anything to say, you can do that in the chat. If you have a question for us to answer, do that in the Q&A. Um, if you are watching on Facebook or if uh, you want somebody else to join, you can tell them to join on Vits Radio Academy. That's a Facebook page. Uh, we'll be live there right now and then we'll be on YouTube later. Okay, that is some of the admin I have to get through before we get to our guest. The other admin, of course, is that um, as for the last four years today, we are hosting a pod meet again with um, Radio Days Africa, which is an awesome conference that brings together Africans around the country and around the continent um, to talk about radio and now podcasting. It's the 12th edition. It's the second virtual one. It is presented by the WITS Radio Academy and the Department of Journalism at WITS. And this year there are over 21 sessions. If you've missed them, you can still catch them on the website or uh, catch them on YouTube later and there's more to come. There are podcasts, there's a bestoke podcast series all that good stuff is online. Um, okay, I think that is all the admin I have for you. You can relax and don't need to listen to too much of my voice anymore because um, I am here with Simi Arif, who is what far a, funnier than I am. Oh, thanks. What a long, a large amount of admin for <laughs> something online. <laughs> it's the largest. I haven't heard such a list of things to do <laughs> and and i try to do it without looking at my papers so. oh okay well congratulations you did very well then thank you um this is simi Arif. if you don't know who he is he's a south african comedian he hosts a podcast um africa's eighth best podcast even yes. though it's not even though it's yeah. not africa's best it's not it's, it's not it's actually africa's like fourth but who's counting these days it's definitely not the south african radio awards so i mean <laughs> And so it's um it's called lesser known somebody's he interviews mm -hmm. all kinds of cool people like comedians yeah. musicians sometimes one of the zuma yeah. zuma family members we can just say political political figures why don't you just say that <laughs> i had to call out somebody yeah. um and hopefully we'll be be joined by one of Simi's colleagues later because he also is the founder of POC Podcasts, mm -hmm. which um, is a podcast production company, has a bunch of different shows. Yeah. And you've been in the game for a long time, Simi, you make it fun. 
you've made it pretty successfully and we're going to just have a chat about that. I mean, thank you, Elna. I mean, I think I came to one of your first pod meets years ago. You remember uh, both myself and my friend Dean, who hasn't arrived yet for this very important Zoom call. So maybe it's not so much of my friend anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I dig pod meets because I think even when I did um, Africa Podfest, or I can never, I never remember the name, but you get to speak to all these, uh, all these different people about podcasts and everybody has like their own like type of ideas. And I like hearing that type of stuff because there's no um, formula to this. Yeah, you know, I thought it would get more formulaic. Because I remember in those early podcasts, uh, pod mm. meets saying, um, you know, the game is open. We don't know yet. We don't know what's going to happen. Just maybe don't try to do this for money. <laughs> but yeah. other than that, like have yeah. fun. And um, obviously there are certain things that have particularly worked. Yeah. But it really isn't as formulaic as I thought it would become. And as formulaic as other industries and other, so other podcast industries have become in other I countries. I mean, as a... As a creative, I think that the cool thing is that it, um, it's like a tabula rasa. You can paint whichever way you want to, really. And I think that's the cool thing about podcasts. Like, so when I started making podcasts, Lesson on Somebody's wasn't like my first podcast. I used to go to the cricket with my friends and take my, um, the best recording equipment ever made was a Zoom H4. It's the best one ever made. That thing has traveled with me around the world every cricket stadium I could get into. And I would just interview fans like during the days of the test match cricket. And then I would put, pop this stuff online and like nobody would listen to it, maybe like 17 people or so. But I mean, like that's how I learned, I guess. But I also come from radio. So I knew yeah. what audio needed to be done. Yeah. And yet we also know that a lot of people come from radio and that doesn't mean they naturally have a brain for podcasts. And, yeah. and It just means they know how to audio archive very well. That's the uh, radio stations have been living on that audio archiving thing. That's their, that's their thing. And they think it's a podcast, but I mean like, Hey, kudos to them. They've got more money than me. So they must be doing well. And to be <laughs> honest, some of my favorite podcasts, like, I don't know if you've listened to Solutionist Thinking with Bruce Whitfield. Yeah. yeah I think that's one of the best podcasts ever made, like hands down. Really, really great. Yeah. So um, going back to the beginning, maybe mm -hmm. not back to cricket days, but mm -hmm. to let's know somebody's, what is the mm -hmm. one thing you, back then like what that i don't have to happen? interview people man let me tell you running <laughs> running a chat style podcast is probably the most difficult thing ever unless you're going to do like return and returning guests then it's fine but i wish i found myself a co-host and we just spoke a bunch of different things about different topics it would have made the recording process so much easier because now you have to find a guest research a guest interview the guests and like South Africa, I always say South Africa has like three celebrities in it. And, and two of them don't even, no, 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 not at all. It's called lesson on somebody's for a reason. It's not, it's not called this person has made it. Um, but like out of the three celebrities, two don't even stay here. And Bonang doesn't answer my emails. So, I mean, you have to find interesting people to interview and you kind of run out. Sometimes you, um, I have weeks where I don't have anybody to record with. And sometimes I get lazy in recording, but, um, I'm grateful that I have a, like a dope listening base and some cool engagement and good numbers. And that comes from as an independent podcast. So that's a pretty cool thing. Like I don't have a backing of a radio station. I don't have large amounts of money to throw into promotion. I don't have any of those things. I have just my recorder, just my microphone, just my editing software, my computer, and I can do whatever I want. And when I started podcasting, that's what I went into. Like I can tell you the first time, like, I decided to do a podcast podcast properly was when I was doing, I was doing the cricket stuff, but that was for fun. But I went to the Montreal comedy festival and during the day before the comedy show started, they'd have all like these seminars and stuff. And one day they had a thing called the comedians comedian podcast with Stuart Goldsmith, who I managed to interview as well. And that's a great episode. Everybody should listen to it. And I was there and he started using the word podcast. And I was like, yo, what is this thing? This, this cod past this podcast sounds great. And then I, he was interviewing another comedian that I really, really enjoyed. And then I was like, wow, he gets to interview people about comedy. And that's how I initially started. Like my first couple of episodes are only comedians. And yeah, and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I still enjoy it to this day. That's why I do it still. 
Yeah, but you're talking about having having a, a good listener base. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you how you build that up because that's always a recurring question. But yeah. before you do that, what does that mean? Are you willing to give us some numbers? Yeah, I'll give you all my numbers. I have no problem giving numbers. I don't know why people are so shy to give their numbers. People like it's are. Not, it's not a big thing. Like I'm not hitting like astronomical Spotify, 100 million downloads an episode. No, I'm not. I mean, a POC podcast in a whole, I think we've just crossed over like the 500,000 like listens mark. Now, whether you want to define listens as downloads or downloads as listens, that's up to you. But I mean, 500,000 is a lot. And we have seven podcasts, six or so. Um, so yeah, I mean, like those are good, good numbers for independent podcast producers. Uh, other people have way bigger numbers than me, but I mean, they have, they have a bigger arsenal than me. We have to like for at POC podcasts, I am not only the co-founder, I'm also the producer. I'm also the person that edits. I'm also the person that graphic designs. I'm also the person that deals with sales. I'm also the person that deals with promotion. So, I mean, I think like that's something I'm really, really proud of. That's why I'm not scared to share numbers and our consumption rates are amazing. Like, I don't think we have a consumption. I think my podcast is the lowest consumption rate at like 87%. Yeah. And I think that's actually, when you talk about listener engagement, that's actually the most important number. Whether you have a thousand downloads in a podcast or like 200, if people are listening for longer, then you're doing something right. And that's actually one of the key reasons of a successful podcast is that you're doing something right. And um, how, do you, how did you build up that base without a radio station, without, uh, is it just because people came to your show and, and you spread no. uh, it? No. I think uh, I'm also an early adopter. Like, I mean, when I started, I think the only like internet type of audio was Bold Radio with uh, Darren Scott. I think that's defunct now. Uh, Cliff Central had just started. And there was things that like, Prime Media and other radio stations are doing, but they weren't inherently podcasting. They're like a lot of audio archiving. And then there was me, <laughs> some silly comedian from Joburg. And so when you're an early adopter, I think the algorithms of the internet really, really help you specifically in your market. So if I was a South African who did podcasts and I went onto my iTunes and I really didn't see anything until it started giving us regions and then you could be like, oh, okay, here's a local podcast. And I think I was doing it very often back then. Like I was dropping an episode once a week. And I think that plays a success at least. So that's the, the tip is consistency and keeping the listeners engaged. That's really the only tips you really need. Yeah, and, and I think you can take that to heart even mm. if you aren't starting in, yeah. you know, five years ago. Um, because even if you start now, you may not be one of the only four podcasts in South Africa, but you may yeah, be you, the only one of the only podcasts talking about, you know. I think the cool thing about podcasts is because you can make it niche and still find listenership. I mean, yeah. we all know that crime podcasts do really, really, really well. But I mean, I think there's maybe like three or four, a handful of like local crime based podcasts. But I mean, like there's no like, like we have in our stable, we have a show called Open Wide Say Ah, which is a sexual health podcast. And that's great because, I mean, the numbers aren't fantastic. Maybe they're about like four or 500 downloads an episode. But I think the thing that's cool about it is that it's so niche. I mean, sometimes 702 used to have a show where they used to have like a sex educator on, which is cool. And I remember like years ago, they had another like sexologist on or whatever they call themselves. And I just remember that I just always think that there's such a lovely area to play in, especially with podcasting, mainly because we also have like freedom of speech in this country. Like I'm doing this interview with you now in Dubai. There's no way I could be able to do a podcast like that here. But I mean, back home, it's cool. And the access to it is actually just the only biggest problem. If you don't have like a phone or a computer, you're going to struggle to get access into that content. But it doesn't mean that that content can't travel globally. And so I think that if you have a podcast idea and it's niche enough, like you shouldn't be scared. You should just do it. And then stay consistent. Yeah, stay and consistent. And also, I mean, the the one thing that um, that that keeps coming up is that your you know your audience isn't necessarily everyone. If you mm. are doing something about um, a, a, you know astronomy, as I know some people do in the in the yeah. podcast community, 
then that's not going, going to be. Oh, everywhere. people listen to astronomy in the pod community. Or maybe I need a bounce from this community. <laughs> astronomy, that not astronomy. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, okay, just checking. The stars. Okay. Yeah, the stars. Okay, star sign. okay, not the star sign. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't right, anger cool. professors for me. Uh, um, but, but you know, or gardening, yeah. you don't have to. You don't have, you know, there's no point standing next to the street with a sign saying, I have a gardening podcast, but yeah. find where, where gardeners are because yeah. they are the ones who will want to listen. And I mean, so, I, I mean, I only promoted like at first I promoted to friends uh, and then I was promoting on my Twitter and my Instagram. That's literally it. Um, but there's a question. Do you think you don't mind yeah. if I answered it? It says it's from yeah. Con uh, Conrad Schwellness. Simi, if someone hasn't listened to your podcast before, what's the one episode that they should start with? Um, I would say I, d I recently did one with Majosi, who's a musician. And the reason why I dig it is because we'll, there's enough banter between the two of us. And it's an incredibly long conversation and interview. And I really felt like I had a good flow with it compared to, uh, but like the one with the most like downloads at the moment is that one I did with Dudu Zuma. And the only reason why is that I don't find it an incredible podcast. I just find it, it um, sometimes your guests don't give you as much as you want them to give you, even though they're really, really big names. And so like, if you, if you had to listen to both of them, you'd enjoy Majosi's one more because that's what Listen on Somebody's is about, is about it bantering with, that, with the guests that you have. So I would say, listen to that one. Or you could go back in time and there's a open, I used to do, a couple of podcasts live. So I think like out of podcasters in South Africa, I think if I wasn't the first, I definitely was like close by. I, I used to do live podcasts when I used to do a lot of my stand-up gigs. Um, so I would do one night of comedy and the next night I'll come and do like a podcast show, which was really, really fun. And there's one that I did, it was an open line. So anybody from the audience could come on stage and speak to me. And I think it was in Durban at the Durban Heat uh, Comedy Festival. And that was just incredibly funny. There was just a drunk man in the room who just wanted to speak. He just wanted to speak and I just thought it was easy. So yeah, you should listen to those. And what you're, what you're talking about, about people talking to you is something that you sort of bring into your podcasts where I really like that, that part of the podcast where you let your, your, um, I guess your interview. Me? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would love for it to happen more. Like I would love to, maybe this is a podcast idea, is a podcast host and the podcast host gets interviewed every single time by a different guest. I mean, that would be pretty cool. I would, I would listen to well, that. Well, it could so. be an agony, an agony aunt, agony. Yeah. yeah, so I do so I do an agony RF thing on a Thursday on my Instagram, but um, it's I've, I haven't tried to put it in a podcast yet. I just feel that my listeners retweet and share and listen to the podcast, but I haven't gotten to a point where they are commenting. And that's where I want to aim at. If I could improve my podcast in any way, that's where I would aim. Compared to like the other podcasts in our stable. So we have one with Aisha Baker called Bake the Podcast. And she's like one of South Africa's most prominent influencers or social media personalities, whatever you want to call yourself. And she gets tons of engagement on her podcast. Like there are people who be like, oh, Aisha, you taught me so much about being a better mother. I'm like, whoa. I would love someone to listen to my podcast and say, Sim, you taught me so much about being a better mother. I when you it. say, <laughs> I don't think you're going to get that comment anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. But you, can keep, you can keep hoping. Yeah. Um, I'm going to introduce Dean in a second, but when you say engagement, just clarify for us, do you mean on social media? Do you, where do you mean? Both. I mean, of course, we want more listens. I would love for more people to share the podcast. And I would love for more people to talk about the podcast episodes. So, I mean, there's so many things when it comes to engagement that you could focus on. Like sometimes I would post if I like when I promote a podcast and I look at the comments below, it's nice to see people talking about like, oh, I dig the last episode. I'm going to listen to this one. But I would love for people to start having a conversation over there because then I can use that as content. Like there's for me, the thing that I love the most about radio was the open line. Like, I love open line. It's because someone phones in with whatever problem, complaint, or passionate plea, and then the host gets to talk about that. I would love to start doing that, like on a podcast, like extra content or something like that. Um, 
I want to introduce Dean. He's been sitting very patiently listening to us. Can I introduce him? Can I please introduce him? Okay, don't be rude. Hello, guys. Welcome to the panel at Radio Days Africa. Use the hashtag RDA 2021. And now, please welcome my best friend and podcast aficionado of South Africa, Dean Schroeder. Hi, Dean. Hi, Sami. Thank you. Sorry. So sorry for being late. Um, it's amazing how um, you know one team school goes into another Zoom call, goes into another team school, goes into another set of emails, and then it's half past six. So sorry for being late. Uh, joining the conversation. Uh, nice to see you, Sami, from from Durban, right? You're in yeah, Durban, thanks. right? Yeah, I'm in Durban. Yeah. I'm in Durban, yeah, Dean. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, Dean helps us out at PLC Podcast a lot. Like um, whenever we brainstorming, um, he's like. I'm not even joking when I said I think Dean is one of the cleverest people when it comes to podcasting in South Africa, mainly because he understands the podcasting landscape and the radio landscape and the advertising landscape, and he knows all the numbers. So it's like, you guys think that I may have answers. Dean has a ton of answers. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's so interesting. Yeah, so, so it's just, I, I mean, it, like for me, it actually all just, all just started because I enjoyed listening to podcasts. I actually remember Simi and I are just like really, really good friends. And it must have been almost 10 years ago now, driving down to Cape Town. And Simi said to me, do you want to listen to this thing called The Champs? I'm like, oh, yeah. what is The Champs? He's like, yeah. it's a podcast. I'm like, what is a podcast? And 12 hours later, we listened to everything that was available at that point in time. And yeah. since then, it was like, you know, just finding the content, really engaging stuff that I didn't find anywhere else. And then at that point in time, I was still working at a creative agency um, and was about to move over into media owner side. So I've been at, I was at Prime Media Broadcasting for just shy of six years, um, you know, in the creative solution space, building out from a commercial perspective, you know, what would make for compelling content in terms of podcasting, how to get clients to understand the value of those spaces, but also how to get broadcasters aware that, you know, there is a subtle difference between what is radio, what makes good radio and what makes good digital audio and specifically podcasting. And now I've, um, I'm at a me media agency, um, again, getting a broader sense of like, you know, what the market is looking like, what the numbers look like. And I think the main thing, like from a, like people would ask, like, how do you turn this into money? Don't worry about that. Get audience yeah. first. And then the other thing is, you know, just making um, people understand that sometimes you don't need to chase the, the, the numbers. You just need to be as relevant as possible. And the only way to be as relevant as possible is if you really understand who is listening to your content. So I think like from Simi's podcast and like with POC, what we've tried to do is when having conversations with brands and with clients is just to say, we have a good, deep understanding of who the audience is. So if you want to talk to everyone in South Africa, go somewhere else. But if you want to talk to this specific, I uh, use Aisha's example. If you want to speak to young women of color that are young mothers or, you know, in that sort of age bracket, we've got a captive audience that is going to be responsive, that's highly responsive, not only to the content, but also to Aisha mm. as a personality. So it's, it's been like a long journey and somehow every new job somehow still pulls back into like, oh yeah, The Champs. The Champs was a good podcast. Yeah. Champs was an excellent podcast. Man, what a good <laughs> podcast. Um, if you haven't listened to it, go and listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> also because like it's, it was one of like the first comedy podcasts. So it's absolutely amazing. I think one, one December we should do a pod meet where people just, where we just have a conversation about what we should listen to. Just have like a listening club. Um, I, I have so many questions for both of you, but so does Nohantra Kamalo. She asks, and this goes to your point, Dean, about radio and podcasts and the interaction between the two. She says, people say that podcasting is not radio, but I want to know what radio skill do you use most when you podcast? Editing, audio editing. That's the ultimate, I mean, you know, there's like, a, there's a saying in golf, like putting is half the game. Editing is half the game in podcasting. It's as simple as that. Like there's, if you're really good at editing, like you are willing to sit down and learn what to do and learn all the tricks and stuff, you can always produce a really good podcast. You could take something that has kind of bad audio and make it into good audio. 
you can space things out, you can create drama and atmosphere. And you only learn that by editing audio. And that's the one skill I took from radio and use in podcast every single time I have a podcast. Every single time. And not just my podcast, everybody's podcast. I don't think everyone on... So I absolutely agree with you. I think editing is one of the skills that mm. in South Africa sometimes is underappreciated in the podcasting community. Mm. But, um, but I don't think that... I don't think that um, everybody in radio knows how to edit either. Um, yeah, but then you is so you've been in radio, Alna. So you'll know that there's a program manager, and so you'll have producers and you have on-air talent. Speaking really isn't the main thing. I've heard people that aren't good on radio have great podcasts. Have great podcasts. So like you can't tell me that the skill of talking is the most important skill. I don't think the skill of talking is the most important uh, piece of skill. I think being able to get your point across in a good way, but having good audio, man, how many times I switch off if somebody's audio is bad. Yeah. But you can no, also think- outsource that. Yeah, but the question was what radio skill you oh. use the most when you, you yeah. when you when you podcast. <laughs> it wasn't like what, so, so what skill do you out, outsource? So, no, so back no, announcing no. a Justin Bieber song is not an important skill for a podcast? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> oh, okay, just, just checking, just checking, just checking. Yeah. I'm just saying to the PodMeet community, if you don't have 40 hours to learn podcast editing, it is something you can outsource. I agree you're answering the question. But, but if I can um, also just add into that, because sometimes um, I think certain skills, um, like editing, for example, are often seen at you know, the point of, you know, I want to say perfection, right? So for example, mm. let's take the, the daily uh, New York Times as an example. You Good listen to it and you're like, damn, that's, the, that's brilliant. Like mm. the, the scoring is amazing. The editing is on point. The, the, the host is immaculate. Everything is fantastic. And then you go, I would really like to do a daily news podcast. I love that podcast. It seems insurmountable to get there. But now they're, they're like 10 years in. They've got millions of dollars. They've got a staff of like 25 people working on that. They've got five people working on just like audio, mm. like the pure audio, the sound, let alone the producers, let alone the editors. So I think, you know, what happened, um, like I've been listening to Simi's podcast from the beginning. The editing starts somewhere. You have to start somewhere. If it's as simple as taking out the ums and the ahs or the stupid rambling question or answer that you went on about, take that out. As you yeah. get used to editing, the more you edit, the better you'll get at editing. So if you listen to a uh, listener in somebody's episode one versus episode, I don't know, like a hundred, whatever it is on now. Yeah. And if you try and listen to it with a critical ear in terms of editing, you will notice a fundamental difference. Difference. Yeah. So learn the skills. The best way to learn the skills is to do the thing. Start yeah. and try and you'll see very quickly, you'll start improving. And before long, you'll be like, oh my goodness, my first work was horrible. Yeah. But I think the wonderful and the tough thing about an industry that is still starting up and that has so many people who are starting up in it is that um, we don't have the luxury of being in those teams. I've worked on teams not, uh, like the one you meant, I, not, I haven't worked for the daily, but I have worked on teams like that before. Mm. And um, it is amazing if all you get to do today is this one skill. But in South Africa, you, you won't be able to do that now. If you launch a podcast like Simi has, you will be doing a little bit of everything. Most no, I, I do, but I, I don't understand. I, I don't see the problem there. So are you telling me there's people out there that want to make a podcast, but they want to outsource everything? Those people aren't people, they're brands. Uh, and- <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> they're brands. They want, then they want to, yo, let me find a good broadcast voice. I, there's a very popular um, water tank company that made a podcast where they had like two really good voices, incredible editing. They outsourced everything. But if you're asking a normal podcaster, someone that maybe they don't have radio experience, so they've never been in radio and they want to start a podcast. First, they have to be able to record and then they have to be able to edit. And I think, I think, I guess the third part is being able to upload and stuff, but you can work that out. But all of these things, all of these things are highly YouTubeable and Googleable. 
I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. misquote me here on my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm just. Saying, I'm just saying that I, if people are complaining about that, then I'm just like maybe. No, but it, it's it's going it's going back to the question of like the transferable skills. So if podcast isn't radio, what is a transferable skill? Editing is yeah. one. You know, understanding what just like how to hold a conversation, how to move a conversation forward, as I am so swiftly doing right now, um, is like important and transferable skills from radio. Whether it's more specifically the talk radio format than the music format. Um, but there is a, a I saw this uh, Wayne asked a question as well, and, and maybe it goes to your point, I mean, like the importance of editing. So he's saying like um, he'll record it once with no editing and isn't the goal to to have a near live show as possible. My no, personal perspective, radio. there's there's two different types of like podcasts. You can do a Joe Rogan live conversation mm. and talk for 17 hours. Um, or you could do something tighter and shorter. It all depends on like what you want to do. And yeah. like, I prefer like tighter things, um, yeah. but some people love like, I, I mean, mean, I just want to- Spotify read loves Joe Rogan enough to yeah. pay them so much money for it. So much money. I mean, cause Wayne's, at w- the whole context of what Wayne's saying, my background is radio and do, and do my podcast shows in one take and don't edit. Why would editing be half the skills? Isn't the goal to do it as near to live a show as possible? I don't think that's the goal. I mean, maybe- Wayne, Wayne, and maybe your goal, my friend. It really may be. But I mean, like, I want people to listen to my stuff for years. If you go listen to my first episode and my latest episode, the only thing that's different is that one is recorded in like 2016 and the latest one is recorded in 2021. And so maybe you'll hear a change of my tone in voice. You maybe hear me be a better broadcaster. But I mean, that, that conversation that I had with Jason Goliath on episode one is still really, really good compared to my latest episode, which is with Waylene Bucus. Which is, you know, the magic of podcasting, that it can be that evergreen, slightly mm. sign of change. But I I just want, so I, I hear what you guys are saying. I just want to make the point that as wonderful on the one side, what you're saying is mm. that as podcasters in South Africa, we get to learn all of these skills, which I think is amazing. And it's something I built my career on and to, mm. I'm sure you have too. On the other hand, it, it, if you are, especially if you're doing this as a side project or, you know, you have a day job, um, it is good to know going into podcasting mm. as a hobbyist that there are lots of aspects to it that you're going yeah. to have to learn and put the effort in. That is all I meant. Oh, okay. the, the challenge of that, yeah. whereas I know that the, the international, uh, mm. internationally often, you might outsource some of those things, whereas here yeah. you're going to have put in the effort to learn. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why people are so upset about this editing thing. Guys, there's more people that work behind the scenes than there are on the microphone. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of gives you the answer. So I don't know why, like, oh, what do you mean editing? T- I, said, I said, someone asked about what radio skill you use, editing. <laughs> there we go. And it's like, it's, if you don't want to edit your podcast, don't edit your podcast. Who am, who, who am I? <laughs> so let's uh pivot to uh, another topic bringing you in dean um you know um working on more of the business side working um with various clients seeing um what podcast industry can be give us some of your insights where do you see the industry in south africa right now and where do you see the opportunities and gaps give us your your um your I'll take. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so okay. So so first, I think it's very important to play in uh, reality, and I think oftentimes you get very distracted by the Joe Rogans and the dailies and all of those kinds of things, mm-hmm. and oftentimes the urge to become a podcaster might start as a. It, no one's doing it purely for fun. I think as you get into it there's this opportunity to build audience, monetize that audience and become rich and famous. We'd all love that. But the the touch of reality is very important. And if you're comfortable with the reality, then you can take it from there. So the reality is globally like 1% of podcasts make any revenue. And it's only like the 0.001% of that that make lots of money. And unfortunately, all of those tend to be in the United States because it is the biggest podcast audience, right? Mm -hmm. Now, from a... Okay, I can, let me talk from a, from a media owner perspective and then maybe from a uh, 
media owner perspective, right? So like I was at Prime Media Broadcasting. The challenge there is to obviously uh, diversify the business offering. Business is really in um, audio. So then growing up um, a podcast offering would obviously make sense. The challenge there was, um, you know, finding the right groups of people that have those transferable skills that you can move from radio into podcasting. So that's a difficult thing because you tend to be quite set and comfortable in what you do, right? So you could ask, you could have the best editors that create the best uh, promos for your competitions and stuff to edit a podcast, but it's not going to necessarily sound like a podcast. It might be too loud. It might be too intense, might have too much music. So that, that was a, a challenge, but um, with persistence, determination, and a, and a touch of stubbornness, we pushed through and we found ways to make sure that content made sense. Um, and you also just leverage off of the people that are passionate about it. Finding people that are really keen to say, yeah, I'll take a little bit of, I'll work a little bit extra today because I really like this podcast idea. I want to take it further. Um, and also, you know, in those environments, you know, really fostering a sense that, you know, great ideas can come from anywhere. Oftentimes, especially in the radio broadcasting space, it only comes from a core group of people. But the reality is you might be good at radio, but you don't have any idea what a, a good narrative um, story might be in a podcasting environment. So find those people that are passionate and have great stories, help them, encourage and motivate them. Now, the other side is how does this become useful or valuable to um, advertisers and clients. Now, remember, 1% of podcasts make money. The reality is people do, people, advertisers will not care about the product unless there is a captive audience there. And when I say captive, it needs to be at scale as well. So for example, if Simi came to me in my day job and said, I've got this podcast, a hundred people listen to it every day. I release a new, a hundred people listen to each episode. I release an episode once a month. I'll be, okay, cool. I mean, I wouldn't, as an advertiser, I wouldn't even pay a hundred rand to do it because it's mm. more effort to get that done than the actual return on investment for the advertiser. So if you are looking into podcasting to turn it into some sort of monetary business kind of thing. There's two ways to kind of do it. Either you can be like Simi, set, well, Simi's kind of done both, but we'll focus on the original one. Lesser known somebody's, start having great conversations. Simi is well-known in his spaces. He interviews people that are well-known in their spaces. So that, that cumulative reach between each guest and Simi every single time helps build audience. So over time, lesser known somebody's has a significant audience, but that does take months, if not years. If you're willing to do that, cool. That's when you really are a passionate podcaster. Then you start demonstrating to clients, I've got this podcast, this is the story, this is the show, these are all my great guests, these are the great numbers, let's do some work together. They'll be, okay, great. The shorter, more attainable and easier route, and this is where internationally and locally, there seems to be the monetization option, opportunity is operating as um, you know, like a branded content house or place uh, where you can produce branded content on behalf of advertisers and clients. So if um, let's say Corycraft wanted to do a podcast about their great furniture and how it's all handmade and all of that stuff, they won't have the skills to do it. They won't have the resources to do it. But hey, Simi, you've got a podcast company. You've got the resources. You've got the skills. You've got the ideas. We'll pay you some money to do it, provided you can give us the content. So when I was at uh, Prime Media Broadcasting, the, the opportunity to create branded content series was definitely the most surefire route to turning podcast into actual revenue, uh, far more than what was happening in, you know, selling podcast ads or, or just sponsoring podcasts. So in terms of like trends, where are we going? Um, it's interesting. So there's this study um, the Infinite Dial study that was done by the IAB in South Africa was involved in 2018, 2019. Unfortunately, we haven't been part of it again. But the most important number was like the country with the highest podcast awareness is actually Australia. Um, yeah. Third is the United States. Like, I don't know, way down the ladder is South Africa. But South Africa was sitting at a 23, 25% awareness of podcasts, which seems really low. And like from an advertiser perspective, you're like, oh, that's really, really low. Um, 
But when we index that data against sort of Prime Media's audience, which is sort of your higher LSM bracket, access to internet and in the, the key metropole areas, we saw that podcast awareness was sitting closer to 70%. So podcast awareness is going to keep growing if you... Um, if you are focused on mass, mass, mass reach podcast, it's not going to do it, not for a very long time um, in South Africa. It's only going to happen when there's more relevant content that actually connects with more people in the languages that they speak, mm-hmm. um, t- sharing stories that sound like them, look like them and relate to them. Um, but in your, your higher LSMs, I think what's going to happen is there going to be more and more content. The content is going to get better because competition for sort of your ear, you know, time spent listening is going to increase because now radio is going to be competing against Spotify is going to be competing against listener and somebody's and every other podcast. So that's where the quality of the product does become very, very important as we get more and more listening opportunities. And actually goes back to your point, Samir, about editing being an important skill. If there are a million podcasts, I think there are like a million available on Apple Podcasts at the moment. Yeah. No one is listening to 99% of it. Um, I can tell you from experience though, when someone emails me like, so like I love listening to podcasts and I love when people send me podcasts of theirs, where it's like, can you give me any guidance? Uh, because I'm always looking for content. Like we are always looking to add shows at POC podcasts. Like we always, and I will always get maybe eight or nine in a month. The audio is bad. Two minutes. Give me two minutes. <laughs> I'm done. I won't listen to that thing. It's just because I like, unless it's really, really captivating content. Cause then I know like, if I get these guys in the studio, I can make them better. And the good example of that was we have a show called bicycle Brasa, which is two guys from Cape town who come from the color community and they use slang and stuff and they do movie reviews and their audio was shocking, but their content was amazing. So I sent them my old H4N zoom H4N shout out zoom. You guys do the work and now the content is better. If your audio is not good, people aren't going to stay, uh, stay listening for long. On top of that, <laughs> on top of that, I just Sorry. want to add something, Elna, is that Dean is 100% correct about having podcasts in local languages that represent tons of people. And that's what we've started doing at POC Podcast. We started because I dig podcasting and I just thought there's such a gap in the market that local podcasts weren't around and uh, not enough of them at least. And I was just like, yo, there's so many minority voices or diverse voices that may not necessarily have a platform. And we started providing platforms to these people that have really, really cool African stories because I mean, there aren't many of us, but now I'm trying to get into African spaces, Zulu spaces, Pedi spaces, because I do believe that those people will listen to a podcast if the podcast is good, because I can bring the utensils, I can bring good audio great artwork, some decent amount of promotion. And I think the content can travel. So, yeah. Uh, To to your earlier point, I I think it's that thing of just because there's a low barrier to entry entry. doesn't mean uh, that that you should stay low. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, that is a good way of putting it. (laughs) Any just because anybody can make a podcast, yeah. I can make a movie on my cell phone now. It doesn't mean New Metro yeah. is going to stream it. <laughs> yeah. So so just because Actually, you can make yeah. a it's, podcast, um, it's does, such it a does, good point. Because I was just actually just sorry to interrupt your train of thought. It's just like because you know there are all those memes about like uh, if the if your voice note your WhatsApp voice note is longer than a certain amount of time, like make it a podcast. Yeah. But it's done in like a very like facetious way because I can guarantee you if anyone that's listening right now got a voice note longer than 30 minutes, they wouldn't listen to the whole thing. Yeah, they wouldn't. And, and <laughs> if you could just cut it down, <laughs> edit it, it might actually be a lot better. And this is the beauty of, we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, the symbiosis of radio and podcasting. And for me, when I work with my podcasting clients, I so often say, you know, you have the power to not make it perfect, but to clean it up a lot. So you should, if you stumbled, if you ummed, if you are, if you said something dumb, if you, um, I had a client recently who at the end of the podcast suddenly, when suddenly asked an excellent question 
and we faked it. We put, put it in earlier into the podcast because that's where it belonged in the conversation. I felt that was authentic. Ah, you know, so you speak about this thing I think people call editing. Wow. What a fascinating <laughs> what a This fascinating is going to be skill. our fight for the rest of the conversation. What a, what a fascinating thing. To, <laughs> I just want to remind everyone that um, if you are watching, you can ask questions. Um, we still have about 10 minutes left. What do you want to know from Dean and Sami about what they learned? Um, maybe you have a personal question about um, your podcast that you're starting. I thought um, when you said personal question, I thought people got asked about my life. I was like, hey, my man, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> now all of a sudden, like, hey, so tell me what's going on. Are you married yet? I don't want those questions. Just ask me podcast questions. Uh, yeah, well, that de depends how many of your aunts and uncles you invited to watch this special. <laughs> All of them. Dory von Lochenberg, <laughs> that's that's my aunt. Um, so I'll give you some stuff that we're doing at POC Podcast and maybe people want to uh, speak about that. So like Dean said, monetization, incred incredibly important thing in podcasting. Everybody's asking that question. And Apple are, have provided a platform now where you can um, be able to monetize your podcast by starting a channel. So we're in the process of starting a channel. Can we just uh, explain that, that that means that the person listening would be paid? Yeah, yeah. so the person that listens, um, if they want, and this, so, it's so adaptable, like across the board. So if you, I'll, I would listen on somebody's, my five latest, my, no, my five best episodes will, this is just as an example, guys, my five best episodes would be for free. But if you want to listen to the archive and the latest stuff, you, it'll, it's behind a paywall and you'll have to pay. Now, people are going, okay, so it won't be available on Spotify. Yeah, it won't be available on Spotify until Spotify has something similar, which they are. Like a few months from now, they're going to launch it. It's already like in testing in the US. They've done it to a couple of shows already. It's yeah, going to happen. And what this does is that it gives creators the ability to earn. And it may not be tons of money. It may not be tons of money. But let me tell you, if I had an extra 3,000 Rand in a month, that's just 30 people listening at 100 Rand. That would pay for someone to edit. And like I said, editing is 50% of the game. That means so you save your time. Me. Yeah, in fact, this whole part of me is about why editing is important. Editing, 50% of the game. So there are ways to make money. I think uh, one of the ways that we experimented earlier on, especially during the pandemic, is that we approach different brands and stuff. And what we would also do is that sometimes we'd strike a deal where we're just like, can we we'll promote you for free just so another advertiser can hear and then they could also come back in so we've i've done that successfully and now like i'm speaking to a big motoring company and a massive massive like retail and food company and that's because they heard an advert play on one of the podcasts and they're just like oh well clearly this is something that we should be adventuring into but yeah so there are ways to make money but hey if you make tons of it, actually, if you want to make money, grant funding, grant funding, not funding from a guy called Grant, but grant funding. You can. This you is can actually, this yeah. just, before you go on, this is actually the question I was going to ask you to talk to you, Sim. It's like, yeah, because the, the 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 way to make money, funding, or the other yeah. ways, yeah, which has led to a very very specific content landscape in South Africa, which I think yeah. POC actually sits very really outside of that. So maybe you can talk to that because I know you, you have your feels about it. Sorry, I just missed part of the question uh, because I moved my chair and knocked my microphone. So if you can just say the last two sentences. Yeah, no, just so, so the, the um, because grant funding is such like a big part of how people turn yeah. podcasts into money, it's led to a very specific landscape yeah. okay. of content stories, specifically in yeah. Africa and how POC actually sits outside of that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. your feelings about the grants and the, so, the content that. So I know most of the, the people that um, have got grant funding, you know, and there's various ways of getting grant funding. There's different places you can apply to. But like, for example, I applied to Samith as uh, the South African Media Innovation Program. And they do excellent work. Like I'm sure Elna must have had tons of people speak about volume. Volume is really, really cool. They do some really cool work. They've got probably the best like name I've ever heard of a podcast. What's the crap on WhatsApp? Great, great name. Wish I thought of that idea. But like, um, so people have access to funding and that's, how, and that's how you can make podcasts for a longer period of time instead of just being inconsistent and be like, I don't have any money for this thing. So I'm not going to do it anymore or I'm not can earning I, anything. 
Can I just say it's also if you get one of those grants, yeah. I've seen some beautiful ideas that I don't think would have started, started. without yeah. grant, grant funding. True. Artists There's... doing like really experimental, like multi-layered yeah. things that you're not going to do. Yeah, if... but I mean, if you look at volume, they've done wonderful work, like really, 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 really good work. Like I dig it. But I applied and I didn't get funding because I don't sit in a space where I'm doing newsy type of stuff all the time. We have one podcast that is like a news podcast called Pot of the Press. Great name, Simi. Thank you. And I mean, like, that's it. Most of our stuff is lifestyle and entertainment. So I don't see someone saying, yo, here's 150,000 US dollars. Go have fun, boo-boo. And like, it doesn't work like that. So I have to focus on other ways of earning money. But one of the main reasons why I'm, I'm in Dubai is because they have a big media innovation hub here. In Sharjah, there's a place where they'll give money to great media innovations. Of course, they'll take a percentage, whatever. But that's one of the ways that I need. I need to generate some form of income so the company can survive. Instead, it's between that or jumping on stage every single night and doing stand-up comedy and 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 somehow funding my my small company. But so, I think also too that taste hey, some like the the um, in the the African context as well. Like, I don't know if it's uh, you know like Africa's there's all of these heavy stories to unpack mm. across African content mm. that tend to almost pull at the heartstrings of, yeah. pull at the heartstrings slash the purse strings of international grant mm. funds, uh, yeah. you know, from the likes of Google or whatever else it might be, which yeah. has led to like some of the most prominent sort of African podcasts being in a little bit more of a humanitarian kind of mm. heavier space mm. um, where I think, you know, though those stories are fundamentally important and they should be shared and they should have the, the support and whatever support we can give them, they should get. But, you know, in terms of the lifestyle entertainment side, that is fundamentally yeah. where the growth and opportunity and audiences will be. DSTV wouldn't be DSTV if they were only showing documentaries about yeah. the Holocaust, you know. Yeah. There yeah. is the, the importance of lifestyle content, entertainment content, funny content. Yeah. You know, it's interesting though that like comedy tends to index highly across Spotify, Apple Podcasts, these, whatever yeah. the platform might be. And yet mm -hmm. when you look at the landscape in South Africa and you know, how many pod comedy podcasts are there? I think there might be like four or five at the moment. Yeah, me. I mean, I think uh, it can guys, be I'm so sorry, Simi, to yeah. cut you off, but I am aware of timing. Yeah, we've got <laughs> six minutes and I can see both the questions. Hold on, Elna, I'll get to both of these questions. <laughs> I'm good at what I do, girl. Calm down. I'm gonna, I'm, a I'm, gonna, I'm, a I'm gonna segue. I'm gonna segue into this thing for you. Don't worry. You're gonna wrap it up wonderfully. Absolutely wonderfully. Dean, what I wanted to say, friend, was this. Over. My podcast was <laughs> you invited the wrong person then. You invited the wrong person, girl. You should have known. You should have listened to a few episodes. You should have been like, you know what? This guy is boisterous. Um, I just wanted to say I used to have a running joke that if you have a journalist, you have a good 10-part documentary podcast series waiting like any journalist you could find it but now to get into the questions first nancy richard says editing is important but so is packaging the music the intro the graphics any thoughts you are 100 percent right nancy so i've been working with apple over here while i've been in dubai and they literally gave me a phone call last week to say who does your graphics because we want to know how much you're paying them and we just want to know how they know that it helps with the algorithm. It, it, they, the packaging is great. So our artwork, we, we put out, uh, there's a thought process behind it and it works. So artwork is incredibly important because it's one of the few ways visually you can capture someone. Intro music. Some of our podcasts have intros. Some of them don't necessarily. Some of them have a cold intro and then go into like a bit of a bait clip and then into the interview. And then maybe there's like some cool bed music in between that or before that. I have an intro um, and Dean and I used to have tons of arguments about this because my intro is 42 seconds long. And like, sometimes people don't listen to the first 42 <laughs> seconds because it is like, this thing is too long, but it's a funny intro. Uh, the, so my thoughts on that, Nancy, highly important, very important. And there's a lot of free tools you can get to get like royalty free music and make intros. And let me tell you the, the answer to all of these things. Get a good freelancer, download Fiverr. There are so many people willing to offer skills for like $5. $5 is- Can I add just a, a point to that as well, Simi? I think, you know, from, yeah. a, from a branding perspective, we always think of branding in the sense of what we what is visual. So the, what does the mm. logo look like? What is the color of Standard Bank? You know, mm. like that kind of stuff. 
but every single sense can be an opportunity for branding. Yeah. So if you have a distinctive sound, hold on to it, use it, build yeah. it consistently. Like, I mean, you know, like even certain stores have a specific odor that they put into the store that yeah. it reminds you every single time. So yeah. the packaging is fundamentally important, but don't just see it as so that yeah. it sounds nice. See yeah. it as an opportunity to build your brand um, yeah. in the audio space. Yeah. And then Daniel said, we need a longer version of this. Daniel, I'm here all night, my man. I, I've got a computer and internet. You can get you me at simi at pocpods.com. I'm available to talk. Only Elna is rushing out of here. I don't know what she has to do at 9 p.m. at, uh, at uh, 7 p.m. I don't know what she has to eat. I don't know what's going on, but she definitely wants to leave. And then Nancy. So, yeah, said they, say, they say it, they say it in, uh, in around the boardroom. Don't worry, we'll take this offline. Yeah, we'll take this offline. The take this offline. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Richards again <laughs> says. How to pardon me to be slandering me. You're no, never Elna. getting invited. And Elna, now I'm, I'm getting I no. I'm getting you back. I'm getting you back because when I attended a pod meet once, I once heard someone say, hey, radio is dead. And then I said, they're going, that is a big lie. And Dean's like, nope, big lie, very big lie. So Nancy Richards has asked again, is there room for niche podcasts? I think we spoke about it earlier on. The answer is yes, very much so. Internet is big, so niche is kind of not niche anymore. Health, education, et cetera, instead of entertainment. Yeah, there's tons of health podcasts and education podcasts. Um, we are trying to do, you know, I, another thing we speak about all the time is like getting past papers and getting, and, or like working with like a university and like helping people like listen to it. And maybe there's no market for it, but maybe there's a hundred kids that really need help on maths paper too, you know? So yeah, I think all those things, all those ideas can work. They really can work. Ah, oh, why did you take the question away? I was going to read the last bit of it. With, with oh, sorry. It, and, you're, and you're a handsome person. Thank you so much, Nancy. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what Nancy said. Um, we are unfortunately running uh, out of time because we only have the session. We've got a minute and so, 30 seconds left, girl. Yes. Now listen to me. You, yeah. you guys are like, you're fantastic. To me, Dean, yeah. thank you so much for, um, for joining us. Where can people find you and what should they find you for? Um, Dean, you can go first because your CV is a lot smaller than mine. So you can go yeah, ahead. No, if you can find me on the internet, my name is D W E N. Then mm. you'll be able to find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and whatever yeah. you need to. But find Simi. He produces content. <laughs> yeah. I I work uh, behind a computer most of the time. So you can find my podcast company, POC Pods at www.pocpods.com. You can email me anytime. That's S-I-W-M-I at pocpods.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, which is Samiarif, Twitter, Samiarif, um, Yahoo, Samiarif, uh, <laughs> Tinder, Samiarif. <laughs> You'll find me everywhere. Um, I dig. If you have any podcasts specifically in languages, hit me up. I could give you money. Possibly. Yeah. And Elna, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me onto this thing. Generally, I have to like, I have to pay for a ticket to Radio Africa, Africa Days or I have to sneak into the venue. Um, but thank you so much. Okay, let's hope I decide to invite you again. Everyone, pod meet at journalism.coza where you can reach us so that you get invited again. Thank you so much. And thank you to Radio Days. Africa, I do, you can't cut me off yet because I have to read the sponsors, very important. <laughs> um, Radio Days Africa is sponsored by the Conrad Adenhausch, the Film Media Program. We spoke about grants earlier, um, uh, the, the section in Sub-Saharan Africa who have been a long-term partner and sponsor and um, without their support, uh, Radio Days Africa definitely couldn't be possible. Uh, we are also supported by the National Association of Broadcasters, Media Heads 360, Wise Buddha Jingles, the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria, RCS Sound Software, wow. Iona.fm, which are also a Podmeet partner, Samro and Podnews.net. Yeah. Thank and you. And I am sponsored for... by Zambak, so <laughs> shout out to me. <laughs> the real Makoya. <laughs> Thank you for joining. If you if you um, if you joined this meeting and you are not on the Podmeet email list, please make sure you email podmeet at journalism.coza to make to be on the next list. Thank you, Simi and Dean. Thank you, RDA. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Good night.
Joining this Radio Days Africa audio amplified session. For highlights, podcasts, and more, visit radiodaysafrica.co.za.